Hey, what is up everyone? It's Boy Fry the producer. And today we're going to be talking about ghetto mastering. You know what I'm saying? So when I say ghetto mastering, mastering in its own is an art form. And you should really, if you have a song that really you feel like could make it, I would suggest not trying to mix it mastered on your own. Even though there have been cases where songs like uh, Chief Keef don't like, you know, I'm sure Young Chop mixed and mastered those himself. But uh, the first thing I'd like to talk about is what is mastering? And really mastering is the, it's the final doorway between the production stage and the consumers. So the consumers would be, for example, anyone you send the song to, if it's playing on YouTube, your viewers, anything like that. And really the first thing to worry about before even, you know, mastering your session is to understand what the spec that you're going for is. So, for example, if you're going for something like a, you know, radio mix, then you'd want to mix it to a certain spec. So that's definitely the first thing before worrying about the actual song. So this is the second time you're recording this intro. So I'm going to cut into the next video right here. So, yeah, the first thing I'd want to talk about is you would want your mix to sound really good before mastering. Don't ever use mastering as something. And remember, disclaimer here, I'm not a mastering engineer. I'm just giving you my perspective on the whole thing. The whole thing about a mix is if the mix is not punk punchy and, you know, uh, dynamic enough, let's say, in terms of, you know, hip hop mixes don't have to be that dynamic, especially trap. You know, trap is really orientated around the bass. So you can probably see this waveform when I played. Most of the beef in here is pretty much bass. You got a bit of the kick and snare and the peaks right there. You know, these are all the peaks. So the dynamic range suits the style of music. Now, if you were doing a gospel record or something like that, you'd have a lot more of a crazy dynamic range. And that makes sense for that genre. So the first thing is figuring out what you want to do for your record. So you need to be in the style of genre, uh, mixed to the style of your genre. That's what I always try and do. So yeah, I'll play this quickly and then we can just listen and we'll go from there. So yeah, the first step for me when, you know, uh, mixing down a record for somebody is to look at what the loudest element in the mix is and if that loudest element is still in relation to everything else. So I could see already here and here that that clap or snare over here, just listen, is probably the loudest element in the mix, right? You can see it pop up quite a few times. I wonder what that is. Okay, kick. So we got kick and snare, which generally in hip hop is the loudest element of the mix. So that's fine. Uh, the bass sounds quite nicely tucked in in relation to the pianos and all of that. It's not fully drowning it out, but it is a little bit. So we could do something about that. So that's for me, step one, when ghetto mastering is to listen and to see what you can do. So this is pretty much the chain that I'm going to be using today. We'll start off with the EQ. So as we already did, we did step one, which was to listen and see what we can do to either enhance or fix um, and generally you don't want to be fixing too much when mastering per se if you feel that you're equalizing more than 3 db so if your if your eq is looking like this you should definitely go back to mixing and that'll make you a better mixer as well you know if if there's something wrong with your vocals go and fix that rather than trying to oh i'll just eq out some of the bass on the master track that's a bit of a, a step back you know you're ruining the whole song so yeah i'm going to do some eqing now and I'm gonna notch around. My computer's freezing as usual. Let me just get rid of this thing at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> and yeah, I'm just gonna notch around uh, with the bell style EQ and just try and listen to what we can either cut or boost in the low end. I always start by cutting. That's always my best approach because it gives us more space. So here we go. So I'm gonna thin my cue down, my, my cue down a bit. Try and find the mud, get rid of the mud. So somewhere around there maybe. So 
that's pretty annoying. I find that sound quite annoying. So we're gonna filter out a little bit of that. So we'll go dramatic first and then fade it back in. So yeah, it's, it's pretty much things like that that are gonna help you do just level your track because remember we want to stick to the style of the track and it's pretty much a Travis Scott inspired beat so we don't want to make it too bright but we also don't want it too muddy. Uh, we want it to really when you crank the volume on your speaker system we want it to sound cool and I hope that you guys are listening guys and girls are listening on your headphones. Um, a lot of the time you know you might have computer speakers you don't want to be uh, mixing down your record on on that so I'll just quickly break down what I have in this studio. I've got some Yamaha HS8, which is pretty much my loudspeakers and nice flat speakers to listen to the whole mix. Then I've got some Behringer monitors, which are more like your home hi-fi speakers. And then for the third take, I've got a little Chinese type Bluetooth speaker that, you know, I've sent out of my interface with an aux cable. And that just gives me a nice balance. You know, I can then mix and, and try and translate the mix. Translation is really trying to make your mix sound good on every sound system. And towards the end of the session, I'll be showing you um, how a curve should generally look or how I, from all the tracks I've analyzed, generally they all have the same kind of flat balance. You know what I mean? They almost look like white noise. And right now, if I just show you what the mix uh, looks like, it's fairly uh, sloping, but it's not too bad. You see a lot of the time beat makers, when I, I used to do this as well, I used to be sad that, oh no, man, my mix isn't, fully flat, but I, I was analyzing songs with vocals on them, you know, so vocals will generally boost this area up as well. So don't be too concerned, but make sure that the ratio between the bass and the treble and the mid range is in a good uh, relation, you know what I mean? You don't want too much bass and you don't want too much treble, you want kind of an uh, equalized mix. So yeah, anyway, we'll do um, some more equalizing. I, I feel like somewhere around here we want to cut as well just to make more space for the pianos and whatnot, so let's do that. That's quite nice though, uh, I don't think I'll destroy that, I might actually boost that. Because that's got the snare on it, can you hear the snare? Okay, so we'll keep that but we'll get rid of something else, we have to, uh, I feel like it's too muddy somewhere around here. Yeah, the piano stack up a bit over here. So we'll AB it, always AB and, and listen to what you've done. So the one thing that you must always do is you must always AB and be true to yourself. You know, if, uh, ask yourself, am I really helping the mix or not? Because there's no problem in just resetting. You know what I mean? I'm not scared to do that because really your objective should be to listen and, uh, you know, figure out what you're doing here. So let's just try again. Kind of broaden that. There's a lot of kind of bass there that I want to make space for the pianos. Okay, so now let's AB. Maybe get rid of a bit of sub bass because there's a bit too much sub bass I feel like. Maybe not by 44. 44 is a nice area for club uh, sub bass so I wouldn't cut that really. Unless it really had to be cut but I feel like somewhere around 30. Really just rumble. There you go. I want to get rid of some of that. Gonna make that wider. Turn that snare down a bit.
Yeah, subtle stuff. Maybe get some of that piano back. So now we'll do some boosting as well. But we don't want to make it too bright because at the same time we want to keep that dark sound that we're going for. So you always want to theme your music. So yeah, now I'm pretty much just going to mute the mic and just quickly listen. I'm going to A, B, and see if I've done anything good or bad on the speaker system. So here we go. So that's not the worst. I mean, I would spend more time trying to do this. Um, but for now, for the sake of it, you get the idea that I'm just really trying to tame the song without compressing everything. So, yeah. So that brings me to the next step, which would be mid-side EQ. Now, that's something quite important that I feel uh, people overlook when they're mixing down their records. And pretty much mid-side EQ. Mid and side basically stands for mono and stereo. So hopefully, as I said, you're listening on headphones or speakers. I'm just going to solo. I mean, we all know what mono is. It's basically just the, you know, stock standard. Everything is in the middle. That's pretty much what one speaker sounds like. One speaker is mono. When you add another speaker, you've got stereo. So I'm just pretty much going to, going to, I'm just going to solo the stereo side and you can just hear that. So pretty much all you can really hear is Nexus piano and Nexus reverb, pretty much. And I feel like a lot of the time those those instruments pile up in the in the bass range a tiny bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to high pass the stereo section. That's always one thing you can do uh, just to make more space for the bass, just to let the bass breathe more. So I'm gonna solo first, and then we can just try that out. So I'm going to do it dramatically first and then just push it back. So you can hear a lot of that like extra mud goes away. Maybe crank your system a bit more so you can hear. Let me just see if there is a, an out gain just so you can hear quite dramatically. So there you go, that piano I don't quite like. But we don't want to kill it as well at the same time, because it has a bit of weight to it. Yeah, I quite like that. So yeah, there you go. See, you don't really hear it, but it, it, that, it definitely gives the bass a bit more definition. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And now what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to do some multiband compression. Now, the reason I like multiband compressors on a full mix is because being able to separate each band gives you a lot more control over your mix. So, for example, let's just say you had a normal compressor, but you wanted to compress your bass because you felt like maybe one or two kick drums are, you know, a bit too loud here and there. You'd want to just tame the bass. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to mute each channel I'm not using, so I'm going to start off with the low end and I'm going to figure out where the low end and the mid range meet. That's what I like to do, so we'll do that. So I'm just going for straight sub bass because I feel like that's mid range and it's all tasteful to this song, so I just want to tame that low end a bit. So I'm gonna go for around 100 hertz. I mean, generally sub bass is around 70 below, but I want to tame a bit of that kick as well. Yeah, that's around right. So now I'm gonna go for the mid range and I'm gonna find the lowest point. 
and find the snap of the kick. Where the snap of the kick ends and the sub bass starts, that's where I'm going for. So that's mid range. Around there is cool, and I will find the high point. So really where the air stops, the air of the... Can you hear the air now? You know what I mean, you want to get rid of that. Around about there is cool. And let's just mess around with the high end. And really we'll just use this band for volume increase. So I'm just going to use the gain knob on that eventually just to get a bit more clarity in the mix. So it's important to figure out where the high end starts. I really don't want to increase the hi-hat too much because the hi-hat gets annoying after a while. So yeah, I feel that's cool. Cool. Oops, I'm falling off my chair. So now the next thing, <laughs> I got such a ghetto chair, man. Don't diss me. Anyway, so what you then want to do is now you know, we want to look at, okay, so I, I wanted to treat the sub bass a bit. So now we're going to start setting up our compressor for that. And generally with our compressor, we want to set up our, and I've talked about this in the other video. So I'm going to set up the compressor for, you know, catered to each element. So as I said, I wanted to mix the sub bass here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a nice low attack, almost like a 0 0.2 millisecond attack, a fairly long release, but not too long because I don't want it to pump. Low pump. And... <laughs> And they fairly transparent ratio, so like 1.5 to 1 is a cool starting point. So yeah, and this is where the compression gauges, so we'll just see how much compression we're doing. We don't want to do more than about 2 dB of compression, so let's go. So you can see that the kick is really getting tamed there. And we can get away with a bit of compression because it's a very light ratio. Not the full to say. Okay, no. Hmm, maybe increase the attack a bit. Maybe increase the ratio a bit as well. And then just decrease the ratio the, the threshold. Okay, there you go. So now I feel like the, as I said earlier on, the snare was the loudest element in the mix and you can see that snare popping up in this gauge over here. See, there it is. So really I just want to pop off the top of that there a little bit. I don't want to ruin it, but I want to pop it off a little bit. So I'm going to need a really fast attack for that and a fairly quick release. Sounding a bit different now. It's just the little things that make you mix better. Okay. So now that we've done that, we've tamed a bit of peaks. And what I'm going to do is now I'm going to boost the gain coming out of the compressor because obviously we've reduced the gain. So we want to compensate for that gain. So I'm going to boost that a little bit to about minus three. And you can see that, that that clap has been, or snare has been compressed a bit because it's not as wild as before. 
see there. See, there's a lot less dynamic range, which is cool because it still sounds like it has space, but it's being tamed. Awesome. Okay, so let's do about a three decibels again. And another trick to achieving loudness is not to crank your limit at the end. It's to almost get a bit of gain from different plugins because I feel like you get a much better sound. So yeah, we don't want that much gain. We want about one point. We want, we want about minus three. And yeah, one thing I did forget to mention, and lucky I opened this plugin again, is you want to find yourself a plugin that is is able to create a mono um, from a certain frequency, you want it to become mono. So generally the rule of thumb is anything between 400 and below, you can make mono, but a lot of the time you, sorry for the drop out there, a lot of the time you, you have pianos and instruments within the you know 200 to 400 range. So you don't want to go too far, but generally I do around 200 and you don't really hear it. So let's try that out. So we'll go full. Doesn't sound too bad in mono actually. About 220 should be cool. So yeah, the reason we do that is because we want our song to be uh, mono compatible, which basically means when somebody plays it on a PA system or something, and they have not set up the stereo channels correctly, it's still gonna play and there's nothing that's gonna vanish. You see, a lot of the time I hear some guys they mix their basses in stereo, and it sounds cool, but it never works out later on down the line. So you need to sacrifice sometimes to get more in the end. But what we can do is though, we can spread our stereo field a bit more. So you could use the fruity stereo enhancer if you wanted to. Obviously not changing the phase of things, but you could use a stereo enhancer. And you can find a lot of free ones online. I'll try and drop a link in the comments for one that I rec recommend. So yeah, let's try that out. So you can hear how much that's boosted. We just want to do a little bit. About 10%. Maybe 7, yeah, that's cool. Our mix, our, our mix is looking good now. Um, you don't want to use obviously looking as your final judgment, but to me it's sounding a lot more tamed and we're going to do a bit more. Generally you don't want to do this too much if you've got a really dynamic record, but for hip hop I'm going to be trimming some of the, the peaks, the highest peaks. So first off before using the soft clipper, and I'll explain what it is now, is you want to look at what your mix is, is, is um, peaking at and then you want to set the threshold accordingly. So. So we can see minus three. So really around minus five, I'm gonna set my threshold or be minus four. I wouldn't wanna go too far. But basically what a soft clipper does is it's a, it's almost like a compressor with soft saturation. And basically what that means is it's going to distort the, the clips over minus five or whatever's over the threshold and add a bit of saturation to it. And that's always a good method to getting a louder mix because at the end of the day, you can't really crank a mix really loud if the mix has really loud peaks because then for example, your um, your claps and snares would then be pulling the limiter, putting your limiter into action. And then you trying to achieve a louder, let's say piano line, but the kicks and snares are smashing the limiter and then it just makes your mix sound really bad. So we use this to really tame some of the loudest elements and the saturation almost compensates for the fact that man anyway I can still record and pretty much the the saturation compensates for a bit of the loudness so it's always a nice balance to you know find that that best balance so we'll start off at zero again and then just listen so if we went all the way so it doesn't drop the level that bad but it does saturate the mix subtly so I'm gonna go for around minus three, minus four. Yeah, that sounds nice. It makes the track a bit more warmer, especially with the loudest elements. And then we're gonna add about a decibel or two. This doesn't really have uh, decibels, but more so. And one thing I always 
try to tell people is you must never allow loudness to be the judge for if it sounds better or not. You can see I, I, I reset the gain and then I AB because if I had cranked the gain and then AB, obviously I'm going to go for the louder option. So you don't ever, you don't want loudness to be that thing that says, oh, well, that sounds better because it's louder. It's a lie. So yeah, we'll just see if, if what is happening with the soft clipper sounds better than before. So let's AB. A bit much, I'm gonna go for a bit less. I can't really hear anything. Yeah, something like that is cool. So, yeah, now before we start cranking our limiter, we want to look at what we've done so far. So, that's where I pull up my analyzer and I just listen and I, I check out, you know, how's the mix sounding in relation to the visual spectrum that we're seeing here. So. So that's looking not too bad, the bass has been tamed, but maybe we might pull away a bit of 62. What did I want to do? I wanted to use this EQ here. Pull out a bit of 62. Uh, we actually don't have any bands left. <laughs> but yeah, generally that sounds not too bad. I'm pretty happy with that. The anti-phase isn't too bad. I'm going to listen to it in mono quickly. And it's not the worst in mono. So yeah, I think now we're ready to limit our mix. And we're going to use the trustworthy FL limiter, which I've been using recently over, let's say, your more expensive limiters, just because natively it sounds better. And it's really transparent. You know, the gain is transparent. The limiter is fairly transparent. And we have a nice visual reference to see the loudest peaks and see how much we are uh, limiting. So let's go for that. And that's looking good as well. So I'm gonna set I'm I'm gonna set my ceiling to minus 0.2, and I'm setting my levels in relation to if I was gonna send this mix out to friends and whatnot. Now, if I was gonna upload this to YouTube, I wouldn't recommend smashing the zero decibel line. Generally, YouTube has its own loudness normalizer, so it's gonna pull your mix up a bit. But if it's too loud, it's gonna pull your mix down. So you're actually gonna have a worse off mix. So let's start off by doing a basic YouTube. Um, limiting kind of setup and then we'll go for the more like record friendly smash so yeah generally for youtube i wouldn't go much louder than that let's just check the rms over here and see Yeah, I would be fairly happy with that for YouTube. Uh, you don't want to go too loud. You don't want to be like the thing is a lot of real mastered records are like minus six RMS and those are running through analog gear. So with analog gear, you can actually clip an analog processor and get really loud results. And within the digital realm, I just don't think it's worth it to crank your mix really loud. So generally that would be my YouTube master minus, what was it? Yeah, there we go, we got minus 10. Yeah, minus 10.6 around, that's not too bad. Maybe for a record now, if I was gonna send this to someone there, we had a peak there, which is not too bad. I would crank it a bit more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down my chain again and then add a bit more gain here and there. So maybe 1.4 decibels there. Oh, and one thing I would actually do is I would reduce the bass. So I didn't do that earlier. I'm going to reduce some of the bass so I have more room to limit. So I'm going to turn the bass down a little bit. Without losing the energy of the bass. So now we should be able to crank the mix a lot louder.
Okay, so I'm feeling that I'm I'm knocking that kick a bit too much. And my computer's freezing, so I'm gonna knock that a bit down and then we'll play it a bit. And yeah, there you go. I hope you learned something there. That's pretty much my process and concept to mixing. My computer's freezing. Shout out to my uh, SSD that I bought, but it's f***ing up my computer. So anyway, like and subscribe, comment on your uh, chain of mixing, and we can talk about that in the comments. Subscribe. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot more fun stuff this year. And shout out to everyone that cops some of the beats. You know, it keeps us moving. And yeah, peace.